Yay! Happy, happy Tuesday and happy Valentine's Day to everyone. Woohoo! So excited that you guys are joining me today in the studio. So, for those that don't know me, my name is Wendy Lee. Oh, I did it again. Good grief. I hate it when I do that. Okay, still figuring out, obviously, this tech stuff. Every week it seems to be just slightly different. I think they like messing with me. Anyway, we'll get it all worked out. At least I was able to stream into the event again. So yay, twice I've gotten it to work. So I'll get better at it each time. But I'm happy that you're here and we are going to have some crafty fun today. So I am Wendy Lee from creativelyyours.com. You can find me there um, if you don't already know me. And I'm just glad that you guys are here spending a little bit of your Valentine's Day with me. Yay, 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 yay. All right, I've got a new sneak peek behind me. You can see a few cards behind me. Those are going to be for my upcoming bingo and card class. Yay! I don't know if you've joined me for bingo before or not, but it is so much fun. We get together via Zoom and we play bingo just for some fun. And then we do a card class. So it is a good time had by all. And I would love for you to join me. We are going to be doing bingo. What is the date? It's March. March. It's happening March. Let's look at the calendar. 18th at 2 p.m. Eastern. And registration is going to close on March 4th. So if you want all the information about that, you can find it on my website, creativelyyours.com, under the event section. Or better yet, join my email list if you're not already on my email list. And that way you'll stay up to date on all my events. Okay, let's get our crafty fun started. Switch my video over. Hopefully all this works. Uh, yes, good, good, good. Let's see, I've got to check my settings. See if that'll get it a little bit clearer. Maybe, maybe. All right, perfect. So I saw that Cynthia was here. Hello, Cynthia and Susan. Hey, happy Valentine's Day to you too, my friend. So I've got a good delay going on, um, maybe a little bit more than I had the without uh, streaming right into the event here. So if I'm missing questions um, or anything, please, please, please let me know. So today we are featuring two stamp sets, um, Sentimental Park and Petal Park. These are from the Regency Park collection. Let's see if I can find my catalog. Let's see, it's in the mini catalog on page 30. Go ahead and just go to that page here so you guys can see this one. So this is a fantastic suite. It's what we call a mega suite, right? Um, so it's Regency Park and you've got the Sentimental Park bundle, which is bundled with some dies, and then the Petal Park, which is bundled with the punch. Now, we are featuring the Sentimental Park bundle, the one with the dies, for our cultivated creativity for this month. So those kits... The registration ends on the 20th of the month and they ship out March 1st. I will show you at the end of today's paper crafting fun. I will show you the project so you get a little sneak peek of those. Um, today, I'm, I'm going to use this stamp set because, well, the sentiments are fantastic, first of all. But I'm going to pull in this companion uh, stamp and punch bundle because it's really, really nice as well. So we'll be using a few other, other products from that wonderful suite. So. Sentimental Park. So this is the one that is fantastic, fantastic uh, sentiments. And of course, there's some fabulous images as well, which you will find out if you join us for Cultivated Creativity. And then Petal Park is what we're going to use today. So what we're going to talk about a little bit is getting multi, uh, multiple images from the same ink pad, right? Different shades of the same image. So um, I've created three different colorways of this card. And one thing I love about this project is that you can definitely do this in any color you want. And it really changes the feel. Hey, Sherry, so glad you're here as well. Happy Valentine's Day. Yes, good. You've not got to use it yet, but you're excited. Oh, good, good, good. Good, good, good. Sorry, Cynthia, I was, you know, trying to read and trying to think and trying to talk. Doesn't always work well, right? <laughs> All right, so we're, I've got three different color examples and I wanna show you this because it really does change the feel 
of the card based on your colors, right? So when I look at this, and you guys have to tell me what you think, but when I look at this one, and this is the colorway we're going to demonstrate today, um, bright, cheery, lots and lots of fun. This one, I see this one is a little more, um, you know, it's traditional colors. It's very, um, I think it's gorgeous, but it's not as in your face, right? It's a little uh, more uh, traditional, I would say, right? Then, well, it's not traditional because the leaves aren't green, they're brown, whatever. Blue, blue flowers, I can do whatever colors I want, right? They don't have to be real. <laughs> and then you've got your black and yellow combo, which I always think is a fun, classic look, right? So you can pull in just any pop of color with black and it goes fantastically. And, you know, I got to pull in one of my favorite ribbons, this little gingham check. So lots of fun stuff going on here. But in each of the cards, the thing I want to talk to you about beyond just you have so many possibilities, right? Same stamp set. Of course, you can use all kinds of different uh, stamp sets, but um, the same stamp set was used on all of this, and it gives you a very different feel based on the colors that you chose. And then in each of these, we did a technique called stamping off, if you're not familiar with that. So when you've got your ink pads, you can really get multiple variations of color from one ink pad. And I'm going to show you this. I'm going to grab a scrap of paper just in case I didn't earlier because I do want to show this to you. All right, so let's put these away and let's jump into our project. So Susan, I see that you're asking what stamp set we're going to use for bingo. It's called Happy Labels. Let me grab the catalog again and see if I can find it. Um, we're actually featuring the bundle itself, but your punch it's a stamp and punch bundle and the punching will be done for you. So it's, let's see, Happy Labels Bundle is on page 53. Let's see if I can find it in the right catalog page. Yes, pull that in. All right, so this is the Happy Labels Bundle. Well, I can't even see my screen. There we go, I can see my screen now. Okay, so it is a sentiment set. So one of the things, if you're not familiar with Bingo, um, I really try hard to design projects that make it so that you can use what you have at home. Of course, you're gonna want what we're doing because they're always fabulous. But I try to make it so that you really could use something you've got at home if you're not in love with the stamp set that I chose. So it's all about having fun, getting together, doing a little fun game and then crafting. So, but I love the sentiments in this. I like that the fonts are big. I like that there's a mix in styles. Um, so lots and lots of fun that we're gonna have with that lovely stamp set. Okay, putting that away, coming back to focus. All right, so this is what we're gonna create. Let me slide this over and let's go ahead and get started. Um, since we've been talking about the stamping itself, let's talk, let's start there. So I'm doing this purple colorway and I wanna show you a couple, I'm just, hopefully this scrap is big enough. This is not actually what I'm gonna to use to punch or I could, I guess, you know. All right, so I've got my outline or my detailed image and this is gorgeous grape is my ink pad. So I could get out my foam pad, but I found that on this stamp set I didn't really need to. Now watch, I'll mess up my stamping, right? Okay, so there's an outline. I'm gonna do this a couple of times because I want I want you guys to be able to see the difference. And what we're going to do here, maybe I will get out my phone pad. I just feel like as soon as I say I don't need it, I'm going to have something happen and I'm going to truly wish that I had pulled it out. So let's do this again. And I've just got a scrap piece of paper to show what I'm talking about here. Okay, I'm doing three because I'm, oh, that one's going to cut off. Well, we'll do four. Why not? I got it up too high. If I can salvage this little, uh, example and use it for my flowers, I want to. We might have to stamp them again, we'll see. Okay, so that was my outline image. Now, you could bring in a secondary color. So Highland Heather is actually what I did on this card here, is I brought in Highland Heather ink to fill in my flowers. So let's look at that. And I'm gonna use this flower fill. And I love this, this is called two-step stamping if you're not familiar with it. And so you really can just line these on top of each other. Of course, I can't see because I'm on video, but hopefully I'm somewhat aligned. So you could take a lighter stamp color or a totally different stamp color if you wanted to and layer those on top of each other. But what I wanted to talk to you about today is you don't have to have 
another stamp color, really. You could do this with one stamp pad, right? You could do the outline and get the lighter shades for the fill. So if we were to stamp full strength with both, and, and I can show you that as well. We, we can keep stamping on this scrap as long as we want to. So let me do that. Let's, let's do one. So that's Highland Heather on the grape. Let's do our next one, grape on grape, full strength. So you can see what that one's going to look like. If I can somewhat line these up. Okay, so grape on grape, still looking pretty darn good, I think, right? I should grab my scrub and try to clean this off in between because I may need to. See if I can get that and clean that off a little bit. All right, so that's full strength grape on grape. Not lined up very well, but still good. Okay, now what I want to show you is that you can take the same ink pad. I'm going to stamp it off on a scrap piece of paper to remove some of the ink and then stamp it. And now you have a two-tone flower. And I love that it's slightly lighter than this Highland Heather. So you could go either way. If you wanted to use two colors of ink pads, you totally could. But what I love is that you can just get a lighter color here. Now, I didn't ink it up again, and I'm going to stamp it a third time over this. And you can see you're going to get even lighter colors if you do that. So this is amazing to me. So full strength stamped off once, stamped off twice. So you can get so many variations. Now I could do it again and it would have just a slight, uh, a slightly lighter uh, color here as well. This is the tone I'm liking. So that's the one I'm gonna go with. And I may go ahead and mix these since I've got them on here. We'll see if I um, did well enough that I can punch these out. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. And you guys can see that you can do so much with one ink color. You don't have to have every color that is made. I buy every color that is made anyway, whether I need it or not, because I love having the variety at my fingertips, right? All right, so our punches, if you're not familiar with our punches, our punches are fantastic. So they fold, they're very sturdy, they fold flat. You've got an image on one end and an image on the top. You have a lock, so you're gonna slide that lock, it's gonna open. The end that opens is the end you squeeze. A lot of people get confused by that and they think that the paper goes in this end. It does not, it goes in this end. I like to use them upside down so I can see where I'm punching. So I will slide the paper in and there we go. So I'm just giving it a little bit of a squeeze to hold that paper in place. And then I can go ahead and punch that out. Now I've got a little bit of a divot on that upper flower because I got close to the edge. I'm going to let that ride. Let's see how this all plays out for us. And then I'm going to also use this one here, which is going to cut it off quite a bit of that small flower. So we'll see if I'm happy by the time we make our card. If not, I can I'll stamp it again. So I'm going to mix and match these two, you know, the Highland Heather versus the stamped off grape. And boy, when you have them right next to each other like this, let's see if I can get them lined up. They're very similar, right? I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So you could even put in that darker one if you wanted to. All right, when you're done punching, you just close that and slide that lock and it's ready to put on your shelf, which I love because it doesn't take up a ton of room. All right, questions. All right, if you guys have questions, be sure to ask as we go. So next, let's do our layers. Bring that foam pad back in. I already moved it thinking I was done. I'm not done. All right, we're gonna slide our flowers over to the side. I am going to use my white layer. So this is basic white cardstock. And I'm going to pull in Coastal Cabana. Is that a traditional color for leaves? No, probably not. But I don't care. It makes me happy. And I love the grape Highland Heather um, pool party, Coastal Cabana. I love those colors all together. Um, so I just think they, they make a really nice... Um, fun combination. So I'm just going to stamp, this is the outline. I'm going to stamp the outline right on my white cardstock there. And then I'm going to get the detailed layer, the, the fill, I should say. I said that wrong. And again, I want to stamp off on my scrap to remove some of the ink. And then I'm going to stamp on my cardstock. And boy, I cannot see where I'm stamping. You know, I don't know about you guys. My head needs to be right over the top. And you don't realize that 
until you start doing videos, right? <laughs> oh, good. You're loving the colors. Yeah, I do too. I think they're just beautiful together. It's such a great combination. Doesn't speak to everyone, I know, but I do love it. So hopefully you guys will at least give it a try. All right, let's go ahead and layer, do a little layering here. So I was able, so this new way that I'm going live, I realized today I could update the description before I even was on screen with you guys. So I was able to go ahead and you can see now, if you do the show more, you will be able to see that um, we've got the complete supply list, cut dimensions, all the links are there. All you have to do is click them and add products to your cart and you're good to go. Yes, awesome. Okay, we've got a piece of Highland Heather that I have used the Cane Weave 3D embossing folder. So this is in this Regency Park product suite. And oh my gosh, is that not amazing? I love our 3D embossing folders. So much texture, which I love, 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 love texture. So good. All right, so we're gonna layer that also on some Coastal Cabana. And I'm just gonna use Stamp and Seal. You use the adhesive that makes your heart happy. I'm a Stamp and Seal girl. All right, somewhat centered is what I'm going for. Perfect. Now I want to, dun, dun, dun. there it is. So I'm gonna add some ribbon and I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. So you could wrap your ribbon all the way around and tie your bow, but I'm just gonna lay this out here and I'm gonna cheat a little bit and save myself a little bit of supply here. So I'm going to do this and just wrap it around that bottom edge. So let's put a little adhesive. We'll just fold that ribbon right into it. A little adhesive on the other side and same thing. So I'm saving a little bit of that ribbon plus the frustration of trying to tie this into a bow and keep it tight, right? Do we ever struggle with that? I know I do, definitely I do, for sure. All right, let's fold our card base. So it's four and a quarter by 11. So I did a top fold. You could change that if that's not your favorite, but for whatever reason, I've noticed recently in the past, I don't know how many months, I really am drawn to this. I always was a kind of what I would call a book fold girl where I liked it over on the side, but I'm really enjoying this orientation. So you're probably seeing a lot of cards from me that way. Okay. Now, if you guys have things that you tend to struggle with or want to know more about um, as, as it relates to crafting tips, um, crafting products, especially Stampin' Up! products. I know more about Stampin' Up! products than I do any others, uh, since that is what I sell. Um, but if you've got any questions, I will try to help where I can. So let me know, leave me comments on any of the videos. Um, you can leave me comments on my blog, creativelyyours.com, or you know, even on Facebook, Instagram, wherever you can find me, um, and I will be happy to answer them. Okay, let's go ahead and adhere this layer down. Now that we've got that ribbon on our card base, we're going to put some dimensionals. Now, if you don't want these layers popped up, don't pop them up. They're, they're nice and thick. You know, you've got some great texture. This doesn't have to be popped up. You guys know I love things popped up. And, you know, I didn't go centered. I kind of went down and over to the right. Great, you place your layer where you want, but I'm kind of looking at these two sides and going for a skinny edge there. Okay, now let's grab some of our flowers. I'm gonna mix and match, right? Do a lighter one there, maybe the darker one. We'll do that. How about that? That looks kind of fun. Now I'm gonna put some dimensionals on these as well. Again, if you don't want all this height, you don't have to do it. If you keep your card within a quarter of an inch height, then um, you know you can you can send it without extra postage. Now this stamp does have a little spot where it, it kind of helps you know that that flower should go about there. So you can cover up that little divot if you want. Now I'm finding the other flowers I can put wherever the heck I want to put them. Um, there may be a rhyme or reason to the placement, but I haven't found anything that is distracting to me. So I'm just going to put them wherever I want to. So yes, I love all the layers. Um, and again, if it's too much for you, just don't, you could leave some out, right? I'm just going to smooth this off since that punch, uh, you know, I was too close to the edge, but we're making it work anyway. So 
that punch out a divot. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, you know what I forgot to grab? My wink Estella. Let's add a little wink Estella. Love a little bling a bling, right? Some shimmer to our flower. Now, one of the cool things I think is neat about wink Estella is that when I color this, look at that. Can you guys see? It blends a little bit because I'm adding moisture to a classic water-based ink. It's going to blend that a little bit and give that flower center just a tidge of color. I think that's awesome. You just need to know that that's going to happen when you're coloring because otherwise it might might upset you. I don't know. It doesn't upset me. I love it. All right. We're saving those flowers to the inside. Yes, you like the layering. I love the layering. Maybe you're telling me you don't like the layering. <laughs> All right. Slide these over. Let's do our sentiment. So I've just got a little strip, half inch strip of paper. We're going to bring in our gorgeous grape again and our let's celebrate and we'll stamp this down. So pretty. I like bold sentiments uh, uh, versus uh, lighter color sentiments for whatever reason. Just speaks to me. Um, you know, kind of like it. And then we're going to move that out of the way again and we will clip this end off here. So I'm just angle cutting that. And then this is going to pop right on my card front. So let's add some dimensionals there. Again, if you don't want to pop all of it up, you don't have to pop it all up. It's fine. Not, not a big deal. And I'm kind of using my ribbon as a guide. I have it hanging over the edge a little. You guys know I like to, if you're familiar with me, you know I like to cross those edges like that. And then I want to add a little bow in this ribbon, uh, which I've totally lost. Oh, here we go. All right, so if you're gonna tie your bow, you could cut off your ribbon first, maybe nine inches or so. You gotta figure out what works for your hands. I actually like to leave mine on the spool. So I'm gonna come in a little bit, give me a little bit to work with, do my two loops, my crisscross, one goes through the hole and I pull that. Now this ribbon is a little um, more difficult to work with than some. Some are super easy. And some are a little more difficult. This one isn't hard, but it does have a little bit of a stickiness to it because of the glitter on it. So you may have to work with it a little bit. So I'm going to kind of push my, what little nails I have. Actually, I'm doing pretty good right now. Um, I'm going to kind of let that slide a little bit as I pull that. So you, you want to hold your knot and try to keep your knot tight when you pull these legs out because you're trying to get this bow tight and the size that you want it, right? So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to clip off my ends. Cute. That one leg might be a little bit long. Maybe I'll cut off just a smidge more. No right or wrong way to do it. All right. Let's bring in some glue dots or what I like to call boogers. I know it's terrible. Let's grab a couple of those since we've got a texture, quite a bit of texture on this ribbon. And I'm just gonna add those to the knot and then slide this right under the edge of that label. That way it looks like I tied this all the way around my layer and that that's just sticking out. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Do you guys do that? Do you do the cheater? You have a problem tying the right sizes for lowering. Oh, Cindy, I'm not understanding. Problem with tying to right, find the right sizes. Yeah, you know, you just have to play with it. So um, until you're feeling comfortable, use a little more ribbon, you know, but I find eight, nine inches is usually pretty good. Um, if you struggle with it, go a little longer, go with 12. You can always clip some off. Um, until you're happy with it. All right, so I'm gonna pull in, these are, I probably have cut off the name. Of course I did. I think these are the glossy, these are the glossy dots. Um, I used the gorgeous grape on the first card, but you know, you could pull in, you could pull in this, I think that's supposed to be pool party. It might be Coastal Cabana, but I think that would look nice too. What do you guys think? I'll let you vote. Do you want me to put the blue ones on there or the purple ones like the original? I'll give that a moment. We'll do that in a moment. I'll give you guys a, um, 
a chance to vote for that, leave me a comment, and I'll work on the inside. So we're going to bring our design to the inside, which, you know, I love to do. And of course, I don't show it much, but you want to, you know, coordinate your envelope too, if you can. How fun is it to get a card in the mail where the envelope coordinates? I, I don't do it as much as I should. Um, but okay, so we're going to bring our design to the inside as well. So let me go ahead and grab my foam pad again and my scrap paper because I am going to stamp off the edge a little bit. And don't forget to tell me which color dots you guys want me to use. Oh, good. You love the cheater bow. Yeah, me too. Me too. All right, we're going to stamp our leaves again. Let me just slide all that over. I feel like I don't have enough room. And I'm going to use the detailed stamp again. Ink that up. Really didn't need to ink up the whole thing. I only needed part of it because I'm going to do one down here. I'm going to have to ink it up again. Rotate it. I'm going to use the other end up at the top here. Okay, cute. We bring our leafy design to the inside. And then let's do our um, fill. And we're, don't forget to stamp off if you like that lighter shade. So we'll stamp off. And then we'll fill that in. All right, let me rotate this. Same thing on the other end. Get some ink in there. We'll stamp that off and then fill that right in. We've got our beautiful flowers on the inside, or all our leaves. We'll add our flowers. Let's go ahead and add a sentiment as well. Sometimes I stamp the inside of my cards, but a lot of times I don't add a sentiment. I love to bring the design inside, but there's many times I don't put a sentiment in, but I'm going to today. Why not? All the wonderful things you do. Such a great, great set of words in this stamp set. All right, everybody's saying purple is what I'm seeing from the vote. So that's what I'm going to pick. Unless I see something come up that makes it a very different answer. Purple is what I liked the first time around too. But I thought I'd give you guys a choice, maybe you like it, the others. All right, we're going to put this layer on the inside. This is just a four and a quarter, uh, four by five and a quarter. And then we're going to add our little flowers. Now, this is not my favorite adhesive, but sometimes it's the adhesive that's the right one to use. So liquid glue, um, I don't like to get sticky and I tend to get sticky when I use this. So you put your liquid glue on and I'm using liquid glue because of the shapes we're dealing with. And I'm just going to lay my flowers down. So pretty. And I'm trying not to go excessive with the glue. Now, if you're familiar with Maker's Mojo, so Maker's Mojo is our creative escape, online creative escape, I should clarify that. Um, and I partner with four other demonstrators, Anne-Marie Heil, Audra Monk, Melissa Kerman, and Joe Blackman. And we do a two-day, just two full days of fun. That's technically a day and a half, but it's a 10 live presentations and we do all kinds of fun tips and tricks that we share and registration for early bird closes today so um you have until the and let's see april 20th i believe is the cutoff for registration but if you want to get your hat in for the early bird drawing you would want to uh get your registration in by today all right so we are going to color these floral centers. But the reason I went down that path is Melissa Kerman does a trick where she puts liquid glue on it, sets it aside to dry because liquid glue will dry tacky. I just don't have the patience. I end up with things stuck to my sleeve is what I find. But um, it's a great trick if you have the patience to let it dry. Let it dry and then it's tacky and you can stick it right down on your project without all the oozy mess, which is great. All right. So what I see is we are voting purple. So let's go in with purple. So I'm going to grab this little strip right here. If I see if I can get them off. Sometimes it's hard when it's on a little piece like this. Yeah, I'll fight that later off camera. We'll do this. Uh, let's see. Let's put a giant one right there. Why not? And then we'll put that one. All right. Just sprinkling on a few. You could put more if you wanted. 
So that was kind of fun to sprinkle those in with the floral images. All right, love it. So we've got great texture. You could do your layers flat or you could have them popped up like I do. We've got a little bit of shimmer in the center with our Stella and we've got our little jams, a little shimmer in our ribbon, ties it all together, brought our design to the inside. Super fun, right? Oh, good, you love them? Yay, 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 yay. I'm so glad that you guys like these. Yay, yay, yay. Okay, do you wanna see a sneak peek of cultivated creativity? It's so cool, so cool. So each month, we feature a stamp bundle. Well, it doesn't have to be a bundle. So far, we've featured bundles. Um, so it might be a stamp and die bundle or a stamp and punch bundle. Who knows? Maybe we'll do a stamp set without it being in a bundle. Um, but you get a little goodie bag of, pro of product to use on your cards, and you'll have plenty to use after. And there's four cards and a non-card in this. So let me show you. This time, we are doing three of the cards are fun folds. There's a few techniques on here as well. Um, so this is one. So I'll just quickly open that so you can see that. Uh, this one is not a fun fold, but very pretty. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Here is our knot card, and that's a little post-it holder. So fun, so fun. Fun fold with a belly band. Gate fold. Love it. Love all the details. These are easy cards to do. Well, easier than some I might show, um, but but still very fantastic, right? We don't wanna make it too simple. We don't want you guys to be bored. We want you learning new things. Um, so we try to make that fun for you. And um, yeah, so you have until the 20th to register if you wanna do this kit with us. And you know, even if you're not a fan of this particular stamp set, because again, we're featuring the Sentimental Park. Let me bring that in. We're featuring this stamp and die bundle. And um, even if you're not a fan of this, this particular product, um, you know, maybe, maybe you don't love the sentiments. I love the sentiments. But if you're not the floral image person, the great thing about this designer paper pack is that there are nice patterns on the backs of all the florals. So you can switch that up and, and mix and match it with any other stamp set that you have that you do that you do like. So it's, it's pretty versatile. So you do get a PDF tutorial. We are not doing videos. I've had a few ask about videos. Um, if a video is necessary, we will, but we're trying to keep the projects so that they, they're they not a difficult level that requires a video. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So hopefully I've answered all the questions. Uh, what were the punches that are sold out? Okay, so we have at least two that I'm, well, one is sold out, one is on, and some are just not available. So I'm going to go to the back of the mini here because this is the easiest place to see all of them. Okay, Lucky Clover, sold out. This one is not coming back. Um, and so if you didn't get this earlier in the, in the catalog, you won't be able to get this one unless you're buying it from someone that's selling their own personal, personal item. So that one is no longer available and not going to be back available. Country Bouquet is currently not orderable. However, we will be able to order this again in April. It'll be, I think it's around April 17th. I am going to be offering a class using this um, this product. And while that's, that uh, Country Bouquet Suite seems very Valentine-y, it can be so much more than Valentine. So um, I've already got a card class designed ready for us for April for that. Um, Easter Bunny um, is coming back, but not until May. So we won't be able to get this one until May. So those of you that joined us for our Easter Bunny card class, if you did add the uh, punch, stamp and punch bundle when you uh, ordered the class through me, I ordered those as people paid. So everybody got their bundle. So yay. Yay, yay, yay. All right. And then the Happy Labels uh, Pick a Punch is what we're using for bingo. And to my knowledge, that one is still available. And the Petal Park Punch is what I showed you today. This is not part of what we're using for cultivated creativity. However, it does coordinate. You could use it uh, as a substitute for the other stamp set. And I will tell you, they will get this uh, tutorial, written tutorial, as a bonus in their project sheet. So, um, 
and they're going to get, I always send a, a card or something, a little gifty in their bag. So um, this is actually the card I'm making, but a whole nother color combination. So you'll see yet another fun color combination. And I think the tutorial actually has two additional color combinations just to change it up so you guys can see all the fun stuff. So hopefully I answered all the questions. So if you guys enjoyed today's project, give me a thumbs up, share this with your crafty friends. And I sure hope that you will subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. All right. Thank you all for joining me. I appreciate it. Happy Valentine's Day. I hope you have a wonderful day. And I will catch you guys hopefully again next Tuesday for a little more crafty fun. Oh, and if you're in my Forget Me Not card club, I will, I will see each of you tonight when we do our next project.